Hey, welcome back to another in our series on our GPS tracking demo. In this video, we're going to add a new button that says show map, and it will show all of the waypoints that we've saved and put them as pins on a Google map. So let's get started right away by putting a button on this screen and then we'll create a new activity that will have the map. So let's get into our main activity area and let's go ahead and add this new button. So this is a pretty standard button. We're going to put the anchor points in so that it falls next in line. So there'll be three buttons in a row. Then let's set an ID called button show map with the constraints of course and let's do the uh, full width of the screen and then for the text, let's put in show map. Now let's go into main activity and program this. So we need to give a reference to it at the top of the screen and then program it. So here we go with our reference. So after the reference variable is defined at the top, then we need to give it a value in the uncreate method. We've got a whole list of things that are already being created. And so let's choose a new one, find view by ID. And it looks like BTN show map is the correct value from the layout. So now we've got ourselves a reference to the button. Now we have another button that's almost doing the exact same thing that this one is. The show waypoint, this one here. So we're gonna use this as a model. So let's go ahead and add a new button listener. So all the code will look pretty much like we did on the previous function. So we're gonna have a set on click listener, a new click listener. We're going to put inside an intent in there. So the intent is going to say, what is the context, which is main activity dot this. And then we have a problem because we don't have the new activity that we're trying to get to yet. So this is supposed to be called maps or something like that, but uh, we'll have to leave it blank and we'll go create the map and then we'll come back and finish off this button click listener. All right, so let's create the map. So we are gonna have to leave this little error and uh, it says we're expecting an expression. So let's go create the name of the class that we'll actually get to in a minute. So let's go up to the Java folder and right click and we're gonna add a new activity this time. And let's go to the gallery. Let's see what's in our gallery. So you can guess that we're going to do an Android Maps activity. Let's choose next. We'll just leave it as Maps activity as a good enough name and finish. Okay, so we got this map activity going. And it says here we've got some to-dos before we can get anywhere, um, anywhere close to using the maps. So it says you need to have a Google Maps API key. So you have to register your application with Google in order to make it work. Well, they make it so simple. They have this link here. You just copy the link and bring it into your browser. So let's bring up a, a new browser here and paste that link. And let's see what comes up. So we're going to have a registration process. So if you don't have a Google account, uh, you don't have Gmail, well, you have to get something like that. So we have a uh, create a project here as our option and let's just choose continue. And this will register a key name for us that we can copy and put into our project. So if you have to go through the registration process of setting up a Google API, that's another issue. But um, you're trying to get to this screen here. All right, so it says your API is enabled. Create the API key and uh, let's see what comes up. Oh, perfect. Okay, so now I have an API key. I'm going to copy that. So there's a little copy icon. And now I'll just switch back into my application. So I'm switching back, and now it says this place called your key here. So I'm just going to paste that. Now your key is going to be different than mine. So obviously, don't use the one that I'm using on the screen because it'll probably go away. All right, so we got this first step involved. We got an API cre key created. Now we're ready to go ahead and do some programming. Well, where is this uh, new class? It's called Maps Activity, and they've already given us some code. How nice. It tells us that we have an uncreate method, and we've got ourselves a sample of this uh, function here. They've put some data in for us, and they've added Sydney. Isn't that nice? So Sydney is located at negative 34,151 on the uh, GPS coordinates. That's the latitude and longitude. So there is a class called lat long. Okay, and they put a marker on this thing called marker in Sydney, and then they and they move the camera. Let's see if this actually does anything. So let's go back into main activity, 
And now we can add the reference to our new guy. So it was called maps, maps activity. Come on, maps activity dot class. All right, so now the uh, intent seems to be happy. Let's see if we can get to our new map and see what Sydney looks like on the map. Okay, the app is up and running. Let's just go straight to the show map button. And uh, there it is, we have a map. And sure enough, it looks like Sydney. So I'm gonna try to zoom in as best I can with this emulator, it's a little bit odd. Now, we're going to, instead of putting Sydney on the map, we're going to put the points on that we've plotted using our GPS tracker. So let's go do that next. So let's go back into our map program, so maps activity. And instead of showing the marker here for Sydney and for this guy, let's just comment them out because we might want to see them as an example, but we want to use our own. So the first thing I want to do is create a variable called saved locations. Let's put it at the very top as a class variable and we can assign and read from that as we need to. So we got saved locations as type list. Then let's go into the onCreate method and let's go and assign that to the global list that we've been working with. So we're going to create two lines that will get us access to that list. So my application is the first variable we need to create and we get that from our get application context command. Then the next line down is we're going to do save locations equals and we will get the locations from the global list. So now save locations should have data in it. Now, once we have saved locations, we can go ahead and add them to our map. So now I'd like to create a for each loop and go through the items in the saved locations. So when I type for each, um, the IDE helps me out with some code typing. So it looks like in Java, we have to do a colon and that's how the for each loop works. So we have four and the first item is the counter variable or the each variable. So it's type location is what we're expecting. And then the list is after the colon, so it's saved locations. Now I'm going to look at the example that we used for Sydney. So Sydney used a type called lat long, and so that's what we're going to create as well. So we'll create a new lat long variable, and it is going to need the GPS locations from our location item. So location.getLatitude, location.getLongitude will give us exactly what we want. So now I'm going to create a new map marker. And let's take a look back at what they gave us for the Sydney example. So we're going to, we're eventually going to call add marker. That's the name of the function. But inside the parentheses, you can see that there is a variable called marker options. So let's create a new marker options to start with. And the marker options allow us to create a position property. So marker options dot position, and we have the lat long available. Now I'd also like to add a title to it. Instead of saying the marker in Sydney for the text, I'm going to create a new text and we have the lat and long, so I'm just gonna use that as the title. So that way when we show the variable or when we show the pin on the map, it'll show us the location. And um, we, we could have put some other thing in there, but this works as well as anything for a title. Finally, we do the map, M map, and add the marker. And so this should add a new item to the list. Let's go ahead and launch this and see if it works. We might have to refine it, but I think this will work. Okay, the app is up and running. And uh, we're let's gonna add a new waypoint. And then let's go show the map. So the map shows up and we have, do we have a waypoint? There it is. It looks to me like it is in Arizona, which makes sense. That's where Grand Canyon University is. Now let's, uh, let's go back here and let's add another location. So as you recall, we can set our location uh, on the GPS for our phone emulator to any place we want. So let's, let's go ahead and put in something in London and let's see what happens if we save a point here and I'm gonna call this thing London. So I got London in my list and I'm gonna set the location. All right, so it's just like my phone went at light speed and is on the other side of the world now. So if I turn the GPS off and on, uh, it still says Grand Canyon University. That's not what I meant. So let's go and use this, set the location, come back, and let's see what happens here. Do we have, do we have a new location in London? Okay, let's turn this off, turn it back on. 
Let's see if we can get this to save. So in a real phone, this actually works better. So let's go and look at the list. And you can see now the last item in the list is a different location. So that, that looks good. Now let's go look at the map. And we should see something. Up oh, there's one tagged in London. And there's something over here in Arizona. So yes, we do have two locations now. And the list seems to be working. So this is a lot more fun with a real phone. If you go out and you uh, follow your phone around, you can track and place little breadcrumbs where you've been. And so this gives you an idea of how to track and put a pin on an item on your map. Now we're going to make another video that will show us how to click those buttons on the map. And uh, we could create some interaction with the map as well. But for right now, we got ourselves a map that shows our list. So that's good progress. One more video and we will show a little bit more interactivity. See you soon.